Hello, everybody, and greetings from the Delta College Planetarium. My name is Brian, and I'm here to bring you the next episode in our continuing series about the constellations. Last time, we examined Orion, the hunter in the winter sky. But what animal is Orion hunting? We can find it by looking closely at the stars of Orion. Orion is a very bright and distinctive constellation. Made from seven bright stars in an hourglass shape, Orion is usually spotted by looking for three close-together stars in a line. These are Orion's belt. Looking closely at the belt, you may notice that the belt isn't straight across Orion's body. It's tilted. We're going to follow that tilt upwards. Draw a line through all three of those stars and continue it up and to the right. It will lead to a bright red-orange star along the winter circle. This star is Aldebaran, and Aldebaran is the bright red angry eye of Taurus the bull. Aldebaran sits in a V shape of close-together stars. These stars form the head of the bull. Two large horns extend from the tops of the V. Below the V are the bull's front legs, and to the right of the V is the bull's back. Taurus is easy to find because of those stars in Orion's belt, and because the stars of Taurus are fairly bright. Taurus is home to many interesting deep sky objects, some that can be seen by eye and some that require a telescope. There are two important star clusters in Taurus. Both are easy to spot, but let's start with the V shape of stars that forms the bull's face. The stars of this V are part of a star cluster called the Hyades. The Hyades are the nearest open cluster of stars to Earth. They are located about 153 light years away, and the cluster is about 625 million years old. The densest portion of the cluster fits in a sphere about 8.8 .8 light years in radius. Here, the brightest stars of the cluster form the V that shapes the bull's face, the brightest one being Aldebaran. Except, where's Aldebaran? Aldebaran is not actually part of the Hyades cluster. Aldebaran is located much closer to Earth, only about 65 light years away. By sheer coincidence, it happens to lie along the same line of sight to the Hyades cluster right now, appearing as the bull's red-orange eye. Aldebaran is an orange giant star. It's cooler than the sun given its color, but significantly larger, with a radius about 44 times the radius of the sun. Aldebaran is another star that is going through the final stages of its life. Taurus is home to another bright open star cluster, more obvious and more famous than the Hyades. Located on Taurus's back is this object. To the eye, this object can look kind of fuzzy, like a small cloud. Sharp-eyed observers will be able to see points of light in this cloud, maybe 5, 6, or even 7. This is Messier 45, the Pleiades. Because of their bright stars and compact form, the Pleiades are more obviously recognizable as a star cluster. They are easily visible by eye from anywhere but the most light-polluted skies on Earth. People with the very best eyesight can spot up to 7 stars in this cluster, but a pair of binoculars or a low-powered telescope will reveal that the Pleiades are actually hundreds of stars. The Pleiades are these bright blue, very young stars. The stars of this cluster only formed about a hundred million years ago. The stars in the Pleiades are also moving apart. They are being stretched out by the gravity of the galaxy into this long line of stars, and over the next 250 million years or so, the star cluster will begin to break up as the stars are distributed across the galaxy. Both the Pleiades and the Hyades are easy to observe without a telescope, but this final object in Taurus does require one. Located off the tip of Taurus's leftmost horn is a nebula with kind of a funny name. It's called the Crab Nebula. The Crab Nebula is also named Messier 1, and it occurs to me we never talked about these Messier names. Charles Messier was a French astronomer who worked during the 1700s. He was deeply interested in discovering comets. Bright comets usually have long tails, like Comet Neowise from early 2020, and are easy to identify. But most comets are very faint in the sky, and can only be seen in telescopes. These comets don't form the nice, bright, long tails. They look fuzzier, and they usually move more slowly because they are further from the sun. Discovering comets in Messier's time was hard work, because it required surveying the sky for these faint objects, and coming back to the exact same spot days later, looking for movement. During these surveys, Messier spotted many faint, fuzzy objects that initially looked like comets, but didn't appear to move. He collected these not-comets 
into a list now called the Messier Catalog. Messier became a little obsessed with having the largest list, so he began to add objects that were obviously not comets and which were known since antiquity, like the Andromeda Galaxy. The Messier Catalog has 110 entries and comprises most of the brightest deep sky objects in the sky. The Crab Nebula was the first. So what is the Crab Nebula? That faint fuzzy smudge that Charles Messier saw is the remnant of a supernova, a huge explosion that ripped apart a star. We know this because Chinese astronomers saw this star blow up. They recorded the appearance of a bright new star in this region of the sky in the year 1054. It was bright enough that they could see it during the day, for two weeks. It was visible at night for over two years. Modern astronomers have been able to piece together a lot more about the star that exploded and the stellar remnant left behind. Way down deep in the center of the Crab Nebula, there lurks a neutron star. This is the exposed, collapsed core of a large star. The material that forms it has been crushed down to the density of an atomic nucleus. This neutron star is only about 10 miles across, so we can't see it directly from this distance. We know that it spins very quickly. This is a pulsar, a fast-spinning neutron star blasting high-energy X-rays away from its poles in tight beams. The neutron star spins quickly, and these beams sweep around the axis of rotation, pointing directly at the Earth 30 times every second. The patterns of pulsars are so regular that when the first ones were discovered, some astronomers thought that they could be evidence of alien life. But today we understand them to be the markers of stellar death. So if it's clear where you are tonight, go out and look for Taurus the Bull Among the Winter Stars and take a moment to appreciate those clusters of stars, the Hyades and the Pleiades. That's it for today. Next time, we'll explore another constellation. This is Brian from the Delta College Planetarium wishing you clear skies. Mm -hmm.